Now, there were four groups of people in Psalm 107. There was a group there who was redeemed of the Lord. The Lord redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And this is really talking about the journeys of the children of Israel. But we can apply this to our lives today. So sometimes we find ourselves in the hand of the enemy and the Lord is the one who redeems us. When I think about the young people, I think about little children who didn't set out to do wrong, but there were people in their lives who should be caring for them who did not do the right thing by them. I have been speaking to people, young people, and realize that many times they were introduced to things by adults around their homes, adults who should have been trusted. When I was about 13, I found a, a novel. Just, I was at a relative's home, and they just had this novel just lying around there. Nobody gave it to me, but it was there. And guess what I did? I read it. And guess what? It should be something that I should have read. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one that has happened to. So, you see these people, but what I like about this group is that, in verse 6, they cried unto the Lord, and he delivered them. So, you notice they did not cry out to anybody else, not to Buddha, not to Mary, not to their money, not to their education. They cried out to Jesus, and he held them. So that's one group of people. Now, the other group that we have there is the group in verse 11. They rebelled against the words of God. Now, you know, there are people who will just rebel against the word of God. They won't have nothing to do with God. And if God say, go right, they go left. And if God say, say go up, they will go down. And those kind of people, it's hard to sort of deal with them because they have it in their heads that I am going to go my own way. And you see what happened to them there, but in verse 13, what happened again? They cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them. You realize what is happening here, people? Every time you, they were in trouble, regardless of how they got there, they cried to the Lord. And there's a third group, and the Bible refers to them as fools. And because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, they were afflicted. And sometimes because we're foolish, we do foolish things. I remember, again, I can only use myself as an example, and I know that you, the adults here, you have your examples too. When I was younger, I had a friend who, we used to drive about a group of us a car, and on a stretch of road, he would say something like, I know this road at the back of my hand. I can close my eyes and drive here. And for a couple of seconds, that's exactly what he would do. And we'd laugh and carry on in the car. And it's just when I got older, I realized what a fool you were. And knowing that it is on the mercy of God, why we didn't die on the road. All right. And there's a fourth group. And these people did, they were doing business as usual. They weren't doing anything wrong. They were just doing what they were supposed to be doing. And they got in trouble. And many times... We go along, we're doing our business as usual, we get into trouble. Even in the church, we get into trouble. You know that. You could be singing on the choir, you get into trouble. You could be a musician, you get into trouble. You could be, even the pastor can get into trouble. <laughs> because you know that he believes, or we believe that God has called us, and we're listening to God, and we're being obedient to God, and something happens. The very people and the very situation that should be encouraging you are the very ones that are like storms coming up against you. But what do you do? You call upon the Lord, as these people did, and he hears and he delivers. And you notice something, something I noticed in this passage, that if you are doing God's will, and you are having problems, I mean serious problems, and you cannot find out what is causing it, and you cannot see anything that you're doing that is causing these problems, relax. Just relax. Take a deep breath. 
Maybe God is the one who is teaching you something. Maybe God is teaching you patience. Maybe God is teaching you lessons so that in the future, you can use these experiences to help somebody else. You don't know who you're going to meet. For example, I usually say, if someone loses a child, I don't want to go in your face to tell you I know how you're feeling. That's a lie. If someone has never been divorced and tell you, I know exactly how you feel, man, you'll be all right. God is taking care of you. Get out of my face. You haven't felt that. So sometimes I'm not saying God is the one who makes it happen. But sometimes I believe that he allows things so that he helps us so we can help others. And if you believe that, say amen. All right. And please don't sleep on me now. Okay. Now, I should have gone in that in a little more detail. But I believe the Lord was leading me to St. John 3, 16, just because of the children and the young people today. And we all know that. Let us say together, young people, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And 17 says, he sent not his son, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And young people, this is specially for you. God, for God so loved you. Just put your name in there. Say, for God so loved Yvonne. Put your name in. For God so loved that some people, I'm not going to stop until everybody puts your name. Come on. For God so loved Thank you. For God, so, you're so special to him. And who is this God? When you think about God, what comes to your mind? Look how great he is. He's the creator and the sustainer of all. Isn't he? He's the great I am. He's the one who said light be and light was. Light is still outside. He's the one who is your provider. He's your all in all. It means that whatever you're in, He's all that you need. He is ever present. So right now, God is here. God is in this place. His presence fills the heavens, fills the earth. And if you're his child, you are his temple. So young person, wherever you are, God is there. When you're in school, God is there. When you're in the bathroom, God is there. When you're in the supermarket, God is there. When you're watching something you should not be watching, God is there. When you're going to a website that you have no right going to, guess what? God is there. When you're back chatting your parents, where is God? Right there. Where is God right now? Would you like to talk to him? What? Who said that? What would you like to say to him? Tell him you love him. Say, I love you, Lord. Right. Very good. So God is right here with you. And I want you to remember that regardless of what is happening, God is there with you. He's ever present. So when your friends are trying to get you to do the wrong thing, remember that God is here. And just say, God is here. When you're in a situation where you think that your parents don't love you, and they are not treating you as you should, guess who is there? And what should you do? Cry out to him. Call out to him. How would you call out to him? Lord, help me. Let us say that. Lord, help me. Say that. When you're in your classes and you can't understand what the teacher is saying, and when you get all your homework assignments wrong, and when you're in class and you want to sleep, just open up your eyes and your mouth and say, Lord, help me. All right? When you are doing something that you think you shouldn't do and you're hiding, who is there with you? God is there. What are you going to say to him? And when you say, Lord, help me, what are you going to do? 
still continue to do that? No, you walk away from that, all right? So I want you to remember that. That is who this God is. And he so loved the world, as we said before, that he gave his only begotten son. Children, the Father loved you so much, young people, that he gave Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. Remember Jesus, who came, lived a sinless life, suffered, and died, and right now you know where Jesus is? Seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he's interceding for you. Young people, put your name in there. Jesus is interceding for? Put your name in. Jesus is interceding for? Praise God. So that is how important you are to him. And we're coming up near to Easter. Remember how he was beaten? Remember how they put the crown of thorns upon his head? The blood running down, nailed him to a cross. Use a sword to pierce his side. All the things they did to him, buried him, but praise God, he arose on the third day. And he did that all because of you. And that whosoever believeth, and that whosoever is who? Put your name, that whosoever, put it, that? Put your name in that. Yvonne, who believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God wants, so Jesus has gone to prepare a place for you, young people and older people too. And he's coming back to receive you unto himself, that where you are, there he may be also. And you have, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, guess what? He's coming back for you. And if you haven't done that yet, it's a good time to do that today. And how do you do that? You believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. He's alive. And you, with your mouth, you confess that Jesus is Lord, meaning that Jesus is my supreme ruler. So he's the only one who's to have any rule or control over you. That is who Jesus is to you right now. For a few minutes, I just want to address the adults a bit. I feel that there are adults in this congregation, and as a child, the enemy took you in bondage. And because of embarrassment, you have done nothing about it. So for years, you're living in torment and tempest, and you're sad on the inside although on the outside you try to smile and pretend that all is well. But all is not well. And you don't know where to turn. You, it is so embarrassing for you, some situations, and I could name them, but maybe I shouldn't. You are so embarrassed that you cannot share with anyone. And many nights you go to sleep and your pillows are wet. And I hear you crying out to the Lord, Lord, help me. And I hear somebody saying, I have been doing that for years and he hasn't helped me. I'm still here because there is nowhere else to go, nowhere else to turn, but I have cried and he hasn't helped me. And I want to tell you this morning that the Lord is here and he wants to help you. He has heard your cry. He has seen those tears. When you're having those panic attacks at nights, he's there and he wants to help you. He understands the addictions. Matter of fact, now he sees some of those magazines and books that you have hidden because although you don't want to look at them, Somehow you can't shake them out of your life. He sees those bottles, those bottles of liquor that you have stashed away. And you cannot seem to break yourself from going back to them. He wants to help you. He also sees that some of you are having problems with sexual identity. Some 
somebody is saying, why are you going there? Why not? This is the church. Where do you get help? And there are people who have been here in the church. When I say church, the church universal, this church too. And there's no help because nobody will help them and they can't approach anyone. And Jesus is saying, take your eyes off yourself. Look to me. Look to me, my son, my daughter, because you are mine. And you're confused because you're mine. You're reading, you're praying, you're praising, you're rejoicing, and you're still having that addiction. And he's saying to you, look to me. Take a deep breath, relax, forget about yourself. Look to me. And once you look to me, you will see who I am. And you will see yourself in and through me. And my love will constrain and restrain you. So, receive that, whoever you are. And it's not a joke. It's not a joke. It is serious. And I want you to, young people, adults, pretenders, Come clean with God today. He's here. And he wants to set you free. He wants you to live through these doors free. And I'm going to say, young people, little children, if you're having problems, start suffering that from eight to eight years old. A lot of children have been held captive in all sorts of sins. And I'm saying to you, little children, young people, if you have a situation in your life, at home, at school, in the neighborhood, with anyone who is doing anything to you that isn't right, you need to tell someone you think you can trust. Your Sunday school teacher, your preacher, maybe a teacher. I even offer myself. You see me somewhere, catch me and I will do the best I can to help you because I want those chains to come off you. And right now, for those who are the adults and the strong Christians, when I say strong, let me move that, Christians. Because when you have children, whether you're strong or weak, you're still a child, aren't you? What I want you to do now, and some of you have issues in your children or relatives and they are not here. You can stand on their behalf and you can call out to God for them. So I'm going to ask the young people and the children to stand in a minute. And I'm going to ask some of you older ones to go by them and pray for them or stretch your hand towards them. Is this okay, Pastor? As the Spirit leads and as you do that, remember who you are in Christ. Remember what we said at the beginning. You are a child of God with authority. That's who you are. Lay your hand upon them or stretch your hand up towards them. And I'm being careful here because I remember when my children were growing up, I would say to them, don't make any and everybody in church put their hands on you. So, I am saying, you know that you are in sync with what God is saying and you want to be his hand extended and tell you what i'm going to pray that you have the spirit of discernment as you stretch your hand or as you lay your hand on these precious young people that you will speak to them as the lord leads you all right is that okay so i'm going to ask the young people to stand now young people children please stand come on stand up the Lord is here. This is how much he loves you. Let us give them a hand clap, church. You are beautiful. Jesus loves you. He has gone to prepare a place for you. And he's going to come again and receive you unto himself. That where he is, you can be there also. And he's with you. So I'm going to ask those who are interested as adults, leaders of the church, you could move around now and let us bless these children. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. Come on, people, and cause his face to shine upon you. Lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Come on, older people. Let us go around. Let us help these children. Let us put a blessing upon them or a group of them. Hug them. Tell them Jesus loves you. And tell them that you love them too. Commit to pray for Father, as we come in Jesus' name, we lift up all parents represented here. We lift up all caregivers, oh God. We lift up the teachers. We lift up everyone who gives any amount of care or oversee these children, oh God. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as your child, oh God, I pray that you give them, Lord, a spirit of, oh my God, discernment. So, Lord God, when they're around these children, oh God, glory to God, come here, sweetheart, so that when they're around these children, oh God, your Holy Spirit will give them a word so that they can be near one, hallelujah, one child. They can be beside that child, and they can say to a child, whisper in the child's ears, don't look at that magazine again. Or they can whisper something to that child that is specific to that child. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray now and I believe as you have heard, Lord, and you are granting, releasing your spirit of discernment to these people, O oh God. And Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding also to deal with the young people. Because, Lord, I know it's not easy with all the pull here and pull there and the enemy trying, Lord, to get them. But greater you are, O oh God. You are greater than the enemy. Father, we lift up those who are doing exams, Lord, and we thank you for a true success. Lord, for those who are having difficulties understanding, Lord, and the inability to manage their time well, Father, I pray that you'll give them a supernatural, Lord, understanding boost, O oh God, so that it will be seen and all that can be said, it was the Lord helped them. So, Father, we bless you. We cover these children and young people in a blanket of love. We draw a bloodline around them, O oh God. We cover them with your blood, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. And we claim them for your kingdom. And we say, Satan, no more. No more. Take your hand off these young people. Take your hand off them. In Jesus' name, we stand against you.